Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're gonna be sharing with you our best tips to getting great videos while working remote or working from home. Regardless of why you're making videos remotely, it seems like it's a trend that's not just here for the present, but it's gonna continue to become the norm as time goes on. So learning how to make your videos quickly, effectively, and with a high level of quality is gonna be an invaluable skill to develop in the long run. So we wanted to share with you our personal best tips to making awesome videos from home to hopefully make your life a lot easier. And we're gonna start out with number one, write your script on a Google Doc. First of all, I hope it's pretty obvious why writing your script out at all beforehand is a great idea, but writing it on something like a Google Doc is essential so that other members of your team can actually view it. To ensure that you're not going off track and to make sure that everybody is on the same page. If something seems off, this gives them the opportunity to voice their concerns ahead of time. The only thing worse than somebody telling you, oh, that's not what the plan for the video was, is being told that after you've already filmed everything. So get a plan written down and share it with your coworkers so that they can leave comments and edit and help to make your video as good as it can possibly be. And even if you're the only person who needs to sign off on what you're doing, it's still always a great idea to get a second pair of eyes on your work to help make sure that you haven't missed anything or overlooked something. And even if you're the type of person to just go off the cuff and ramble in front of a camera, shoot things in the moment and see where it goes, it's still a great idea to have a skeleton structure of things like goals and objectives to really help establish things like Tone. Step two, get your light right. Making videos from home can cause a lot of challenges for people, but one of the most common frustrations seems to be people lighting and filming themselves. Your natural inclination might be to try to get a professional three-point lighting setup, but at home, you might not have access to lights like these. So we wanted to share with you some of our tips to getting great lighting without spending a dollar on anything. Whenever possible, it's great to use a window to get natural, beautiful light hitting your subject's face. Always make sure that your subject is facing the window as directly as possible and filming them from in between them and the window. That's what'll get you a clear, bright, even lighting setup just using the sun. Turning it around so that your window is at your subject's back is gonna get you this result instead, exactly the opposite of what you want, not the best. But for sure, there's gonna be times when either you're filming at night or you don't have access to a nice bright window. So what do you do instead? Well, in that case, the thing that you wanna absolutely avoid is ceiling lighting. Anything that's lighting you directly from the top down is gonna give you this sort of look, which does not look good. This kind of lighting is absolutely not flattering to anybody's face. So the way to get around this is to find a lighting source that's closer to the height of your subject's head. You can see that simply by taking an ordinary lamp and sitting down in front of it, you already get a much more pleasing look. And having a light that's movable also gives you the opportunity to choose where you're gonna film and select a background that's most pleasing to look at. Now, when choosing what's gonna be in the frame behind you, there's a clear balance between too much and too little. A busy, distracting background is easy to see why it would be undesirable, but a plain white wall might also not look the best either. When figuring out where is gonna be best to shoot, your limitations are gonna be partially dictated by your home. But some things that look really good to help get you started thinking are framing and symmetry. Things happening around your subject, as well as things happening roughly equal on both sides of your subject. Having balance in your shot can naturally help your viewer's eyes to stay more in the center of frame where you are, giving whatever information you're giving. Another last little thing that you can add is some light in your background to show that there's actually some depth within your image. Just make sure that it doesn't overpower the rest of your shot. A well-placed cheap lamp might actually do more than you can ever imagine. And once your image is dialed in, you're gonna wanna make sure that your sound is also to your liking. The absolute best way to get better sounding audio is to have a microphone that's completely separate from the one built into your camera and getting it as close to your subject's face as possible, but without getting in your frame. But if you wanted to have it completely visible in your shot, that's okay too, as long as it suits the look that you're going for. The difference is insane. So if we turn off this microphone here, you can hear what the audio sounds like coming straight from the camera. Ugh, it's, it's gross by comparison. So let's go back to what this microphone sounds like here. It literally gives me a feeling of relief hearing such an amazing difference. But if you don't have a microphone like this or a lavalier microphone or a shotgun microphone, and you're not willing to spend the money on any of these, then what do you do to at least make your audio sound better? The first step is to take a listen to the area around where you're recording. Are there things making a lot of noise that you need to either turn off, place in a different room, or eliminate altogether? This is gonna be the first step regardless of whether or not you have an external microphone. But the next thing you're gonna to wanna to see is if you have a room that has few reflections, not visual reflections, 
audio reflections. Hard surfaces bounce sounds around and get it to echo, but having things in a room like carpets, couches, blankets, and even things like paintings and wall artwork will have an impact on your sound. The softer an object is, the more it'll help to absorb stray sound and help your audio sound at least a little bit better by not echoing. But you can also take this up another notch by taking a blanket, for example, and hanging it up near your subject off camera to help rein in any reverb. But I'm guessing if you're like most people, you probably have a phone, and if you're not using it to record your video in the first place, you can actually set it nearby your subject and have it record your audio. An iPhone, for example, has a voice memo feature that captures better audio than your camera microphone likely will. So to show you what I mean, this is the audio that's coming straight out of my camera, and this is the audio that's being recorded from my phone. It's at least better, isn't it? And if you have one of these standard sets of Apple earbuds lying around, they actually have a microphone built in right here. In a pinch, you could use it to capture better sound if you don't mind things dangling from your ears. As long as you're not shaking your head around too rapidly, this is a great option for an external microphone at no additional cost. And you just have to record a voice memo and sync it up afterwards in post. And finally, speed up editing by getting your videos reviewed faster. Editing can be a big task. We literally have hundreds of different videos on different parts of the editing process. So if you're interested in any of those, we have playlists and walkthroughs and tutorials for different pieces of software like Premiere Pro and Final Cut. But if you're not used to working from home, one of the most frustrating things can actually be getting your project reviewed and approved by your team. First, it can take forever to send over a big file. Then it can get really confusing when they say things like, hey, change the length of the shot with that guy. And you're like, but there's three shots that you could actually be talking about. Which one are you? Oh, oh, the shot at 302. But wait, are you talking about the start of the shot or the end of the shot or? Uh, what are you talking about? You can cut out the garbage completely and get on the same page by using a video review system. And Motion Array's review system is actually free until the end of June 2020, so you can test it out for yourself. You can upload your video project and send the review link to your collaborators. Here, they can watch your video, and if they have any comments while watching, their comments will be linked to that exact time code on the video, so you know exactly what they're talking about. And you can even click to add an annotation to make it even more precise. There's this thing known as the 80-20 rule, where it seems like 80% of your project only takes about 20% of your time to actually do. But it's that last 20% that seems to take 80% of your time to get everything polished up and finalized. Review helps to eliminate that, helping you to be clear and concise with what exactly needs to get done to make your team happy and your video better. And once you've made those changes, you can upload your next draft as a new version so your team can see your progress, helping you to get your videos fully approved as quickly and easily as possible. And guys, that's it. I hope you found at least one of these tips helpful to making better videos from home. And if you like what we do here, feel free to check out all of our resources to help you make better videos, including our video review system. And I'll make sure to leave a link for you to check that out. Thanks so much for stopping by and I can't wait to see you in the next video.